right guys so the objective of this video is going to be to install a gps enabled um speedometer that will read in miles per hour now uh i got this really cheap one on amazon uh it's called the so it's not a true heads-up display because a true heads-up display projects a um the information onto the glass this is actually not a true heads-up display at all but it is um, a little, little speedometer so the reason why I picked this one is because it's pretty slick looking it looks almost OEM um, and I think this act has a clock also I think it has some different features I have to go through the booklet to see uh, it looks like it's powered by a USB um, I think it's like a 5 volt yeah so a USB cord uh, I'm going to try to um, not have any visible cords. I'm going to try to hide the wiring. I'm kind of debating where to install this. Originally, I had to install it here, but I think it uh, obstructs too much of the gauge cluster. Um, although it's really just probably obstructing the first 20 kilometers per hour. Uh, and you can still see the fuel and uh, temperature and all of the warning lights are still visible. Uh, I was thinking about putting it up here, but it's right in the line of sight with the steering wheel, so that's not good. Um, so I just gotta kind of figure out where I want it. Uh, also, to wire this up, uh, because I don't want the USB cord to come down here, so I do have a USB plug that I installed myself here. Uh, I did buy this adapter, which is a 12 volt to five volt, just get this out here. It's a little, um, basically voltage transformer. You see it um, changes 12 volt or 24 volt uh, DC into a five volt, three amp uh, USB outlet. So uh, the idea is to plug this into the car and then use the wire that came with the speedometer to power it up so uh and then, then that way i could hide it behind the dashboard uh one other thing i need to fix is uh, i never really drive this at night and i only realized this this week that when i put on my headlights um this powers out and so does this usb plug and I never knew that, uh, just never paid attention to it because I never drive it at night. So uh, wherever, whatever power source I used, and I, it's been so long, I can't really recall. I have to find a new one that is uh, ignition controlled so that you only have 12 volts when the ignition is on and uh, does not get powered down once I turn on the headlights. So somehow I must have plugged into a power source that once the headlights are turned on, it dims that to the point where it doesn't get enough juice and i think that's the same thing here and i think i plugged it into the original wiring for the clock so that clock probably used very low amperage and i think um at night uh gauge clusters and clocks they get dimmer because they don't need us to be as bright and i think when I turn on the headlights it thinks obviously it thinks it's nighttime it dims uh the power or reduces the amperage going to this circuit and unfortunately that's just not enough to keep it powered um, so in any case before I start wiring stuff up I want to see how accurate this is so I'm gonna plug this into my Mercedes and just drive uh, around the block and see if this is, is even worth installing because if it doesn't work uh, or it doesn't give me a read that somewhat accurate why even bother all right so uh let's uh, get to that stage all right guys so i'm in uh, my uh, e-class and um i got the little hood display here set up i already put the correct time um it's kind of tricky because all there is a little toggle switch here but that you could press so um there is uh there are good instructions in English, which is good because I'm sure this is some Chinese stuff, but uh, at least the instructions are pretty clear, which I can't say for most of this stuff on Amazon. And um, I was able to set the clock. I have a compass and uh, miles per hour. Now you could switch 
where you want the displays. Uh, you, the, the, you can't put the clock over here, but you could do um, trip, tripometer. Um, it has an alt altimeter. It has a whole bunch of stuff. So um, it's actually got a lot of little things for like a little cheap, you know, item. Uh, yeah, so you could do, um, you could switch your time format from uh, 24 hour to 12 hour uh, cycles or military time. Uh, you could have set an alarm if you go over a certain speed. Uh, I think the max is 150, which is hilarious for my mini truck. Uh, and it even has a fatigue driving alarm, which I don't know how it knows if you're fatigued or not, but uh, that's pretty crazy. Um, and then you could switch between kilometers and miles per hour. Uh, you could adjust the brightness and um, obviously time. And uh, we're gonna test it out. So I'm in a parking lot. Um, so I'm gonna, this is gonna be a slow speed test. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so uh, I got the sun in front of me. Uh, this thing does not like sun glare. So uh, that is important when you're trying to figure out where to mount it. Um, the numbers just basically disappear. So um, we are gonna do a short, uh, you know, I see if I could get up to 25 miles an hour or so. Uh, there's a, a lot of speed bumps in this parking lot. So I'm just gonna drive from one speed bump to the next. Uh, also, I don't think this actually starts reading until you go past five miles per hour. Uh, I think they have that in the, uh, in the instructions. So uh, don't think it's malfunctioning when you're going at speeds below. So uh, let's give it a burst of speed here. I apologize if you're getting sun glare. Let's see how we do. So you see, so if I'm just keeping here at 22 on my dash and you see 20, it's about one or two miles per hour higher on the, on the device versus the speedometer in the car. Um, but it's pretty accurate for what it is. I'm actually pretty impressed. So yeah, I mean, it's, it seems to be fluctuating about one. See, right now it's holding at 14 exactly. So it's matching the, the cluster. Um, yeah, you could see it's within one or two. I don't see it being off by more than two miles per hour. So um, I think that's pretty impressive. So uh, again, I think, uh, I think this is a, a good result. I'm gonna do a high speed test. I am, I'm gonna take it on the, uh, one of the county roads here. I am not going to film it because I don't wanna be driving at 50, 60 miles an hour with my phone. So um, you'll just have to take my word for it. I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, I'm holding at 32 miles an hour and you see it's within one, one mile difference one mile per hour difference um and that's just uh in the 30s then i'm gonna try uh to get up into the 50s and 60s So off camera, I had to kind of remove the center console um, because I had to try to remember how I wired up my um, tack and um, my USB port that I have mounted under here. Um, in case you want to see what that looks like, it's just this guy. Uh, if you want to charge your phone or whatever, uh, but basically, I. I, in the, I think I, I thought I was coming off of the power supply for the uh, factory clock, which this, uh, my model never had the factory clock, but it turns out I actually got uh, ignition source power from um, under here. So I think um, it's probably something that connected to the old radio or something, um, but it has the same issue where uh, it's not enough amperage. So when I turn on the headlights, 
um, both the USB as well as the TAC basically just stopped working. And again, I had never noticed this because I don't drive at night. Uh, not with this vehicle anyway. So uh, now I need to find an alternative power supply that is uh, switched on with the ignition key. So I think I found that and I'm gonna show you here in a sec where that is. All right guys, so here we have the fuse box that's uh, right next to the steering column. And uh, you will see right here, this is constant 12 volts. So this has a power regardless of whether the key is on or off. And it's being used to supply something with uh, source power. I uh, don't know what it is, but it's actually being utilized. Now on my particular car, that one right above it, that is a, a switched 12 volt. So that only goes on when I switch on the ignition and I'm gonna test that for you. In my vehicle, that's not being used for anything. So that's a perfect um, uh, power supply for my uh, situation here. Okay, so I got my uh, alligator clip connected there and then connected to the positive terminal on my voltmeter and then I have my negative terminal here and uh, I'm just gonna touch I'm gonna use this screw here on the uh, steering column mounting bracket to get some ground and you see it's reading zero and now when I turn the ignition on to the second position um, and I do the same thing. You can see I'm getting a 12 volt reading. And then when I start, just make sure that's in neutral. Just wanna make sure that when the engine is on, I still get 12 volts. And you can see that I'm getting 14 and a half volts. So we're good. That's a, a good option to get um, switched on 12 volts and power both the stuff that I had powered incorrectly as well as the new uh, speedometer. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be using to power up our, um, I guess I should just start calling it a heads up display, right? Even though that's not truly what it is, but. And you can see all it is, is a little transformer. It's got, uh, you need a positive and a negative source. And then um, it has this little transformer that converts 12 volts to five volts uh, and a three amps max output, which is fine. I think this only needs uh, one or two amps to work. And then I could connect the USB uh, to this thing, it has uh, mounting holes so that you could, uh, or a flange, so that you could mount it securely with some screws. Same thing for the little transformer. And then that way, I'm gonna try to hide the wiring somehow uh, so that I don't have this thick USB cord visible. Okay, so I have spliced in a, a female terminal to go to the terminal on the fuse box. And, uh, and I have spliced in the little transformer. And now for ground, um, I have to basically supply a ground for all of these components. And I found a perfect spot on the other side. Um, see that screw right there? Uh, let me see if I can point to it with my screwdriver here. So I'm gonna there's like a little tiny, I think this is some sort of a relay, um, but this mounting bracket, I tested it and it does a pretty good job at grounding. So I'm just gonna get some black wire, put a eyelid on it and fish it from underneath the dashboard across to this side. And then I will splice it into uh, both of these wires, the one for the transformer and that one that's supplying ground for both the USB uh, source and also the um, the speedometer. So uh, let's get to it. Again, just some simple uh, 16 gauge wire and I'm going to splice in or, or attach one of these uh, 
um, eyelid terminals. Ugh, sorry, one of these guys. And uh, there should be uh, a good source of ground. Okay, so I think I've decided on where to put the um, the little speedometer. So I was debating on whether to put it here in the middle of the dash further back like that. Uh, but I think I'm gonna do it here. Uh, it's just clear of the vents for the defroster and from uh, the driver's seat it's not in, uh, covered up by anything and it's not too much like in the way so I don't like clutter um, on the dashboard so I think this will be the best way to do it. It looks clean. Um, if it's not turned on you probably wouldn't even know it's there. So uh, I'm gonna try to push the, uh, the power cord through here through the dashboard down here to where the uh, the plug is before I put away all this wire so this will be the plug uh, you could also secure this it has these little flange this little mounting flange that you can mount it in a secure location as well so you could power other things other than this if you wanted to so this might be a, a handy thing to have if you uh, just want a USB power source um, that and you don't want to tap into uh, well I guess you still have to tap into tap into wires but you could go right out of the fuse box with this as well so all right so let's get that wiring through and uh, get this thing mounted okay so I fished the power line here. Uh, if you take out this little access door for the, um, I think that's the brake reservoir, brake fluid reservoir, uh, it'll help you fish the line. I fished it over the steering column right behind the cluster to the other side and then down to the floor. So now the next step is to obviously do some wire management, right? Just zip tie these excess um, wiring that the wiring gets so long, Oops, bundle it all up with zip ties. I'm also gonna zip tie this probably to this bracket so um, if I pull it too far it won't uh, or if it gets pulled down it doesn't disconnect from the device uh, it did come with like two-sided tape and I tried to use it but it was like the worst two-sided tape ever so I do have some um, velcro uh, this velcro rectangle I've used this before this is like has really good adhesive on it so I'm gonna cut this with scissors trim it and I'm gonna use this to secure both this to the dashboard and also the little transformer. Uh, I'm gonna Velcro it somewhere underneath the dash. So, um, yeah, so um, let's get to it. All right, so the wiring is all done. I have to uh, obviously put all of the um, interior panels back on the center console, glove compartment and whatnot. Uh, here, I'll show you where I grounded the unit. I went to this this metal bracket that's not painted. It just has like a cadmium coating on it. So that's a really good ground. And then my wire goes under here. And oh, let me see if I can get over here. And basically, I just foamed or uh, velcroed the little transformer right to this side of the steering column and I just zip tied all this extra wiring and I kind of threw it behind um, the fuse box. So, and then obviously we have this all connected as well. So all of um, both the USB here, the USB port and the, um, the new speedometer as well as the TAC all get power now from that same source on the fuse box and that ground. So they're all connected on the same circuit. So I'm gonna turn the key on uh, to the second position. It's booting up, so you see miles per hour. That uh, reading, that time, that's incorrect. It's around 2.15 or something like that. See, it just switched. 
Uh, it takes a few minutes or seconds for it to get a satellite signal. And when it does, the time adjusts. So don't think that every time you turn the car off that you're gonna have to reset the time because uh, in reality, it gets the time from um, the GPS satellite. So you'll see just switches on. And um, yeah, so we'll call this one complete. The only thing left to do is obviously put all of the, like I said, all the panels back and clean up a little bit. And uh, we now have a working speedometer. I'm not gonna go for a test drive because I know it works because I tested it at the beginning of the video with the Mercedes. All right, guys, we're all set. Everything's put back in place. Um, I'll put the link in the description for the uh, HUD or heads up display, whatever you want to call it, but the speedometer and also the little transformer that from 12 volts to five volts. And uh, you know, when you go on um, Amazon, there's a ton of things you could pick from eBay also. I'm not saying get this one, but this one obviously worked for me. So hopefully it'll work for you guys. See you next time.